All right, welcome to another YWAM Kona podcast. Today we are joined by Bethany Hall, and she is here because she works in anti-trafficking. And we know that a lot of you guys are passionate and want to do something in your life to bring reformation to the world. And you see these issues, you probably saw the sound of freedom, and you're like, what can I do to get involved? Yes. And that's what YWAM Kona is all about, activating young people in their calling. So we thought, who better to bring on the podcast right. than Bethany? Yes. So Bethany, can you tell us a little bit about your story, how God broke your heart for human trafficking as an injustice and the vision that was birthed in that place? Yeah. Um, it, it was actually a couple different things. So um, first off, I'm a survivor of de domestic violence. And so growing up in a home, you know, I was no stranger to rejection and isolation wow. and um, heartache and heartache at the hands of people who are supposed to be there mm. for you, caring for you. Yes. Um, but secondly, as I got a little bit older, um, I remember sitting in um, a church service one, mm. one day and somebody had presented on sex trafficking and it was the first time I had really ever heard of it. And something inside of me just began to rage wow. at the injustice mm. of it, you know, because I, I can, I, I could identify in myself um, that feeling of injustice. Wow. And from that point on, and even as I was a young girl, I was always bent towards justice. You know, I was, uh, when I was in elementary school and I found out there was no Santa Claus. Oh, please believe every kid in that school found out that there was, that Santa Claus was not real. And That's it was, awesome. I was just so upset that these adults would just lie to us and allow us, you know. Um, but also I, I had watched the movie, The Inn of the Six Happiness, Gladys Aylward, when I was mm. a little girl. Mm. And just her mission journey of being this woman who just had a heart for this nation, didn't fully understand why, mm. but went through hell and high water. Did I say that? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> to, um, to get there yes. despite everyone's opposition and everyone huh. saying, you're crazy, you can't do this, this isn't for women, you can't go alone, it's too dangerous. But this little mm. woman had this fire inside yes. of her and she went and it was because of her going and her obedience to the Lord. She didn't even fully understand the call or why she went, but it was this fire inside of her mm. that caused her to lead an orphanage of a hundred children to safety in the middle of war wow. um, over a, I think it was a hundred mile journey on foot. And so I think for me, it's always been something that has been burning inside of me. Mm -hmm. And then when I heard about this injustice of sex trafficking, it took it to a whole nother level and it gave something, uh, gave fuel really mm -hmm. to put that fire wow. inside of me too. And so that's kind of um, my journey. And uh, really from there, it was still probably another decade or so before I really started to get into the work. And prior to that, it was, um, <laughs> It was the little it was the little steps you know it was working at my job that i thought was so mundane for so many years but looking back i see how the lord really was training me and equipping me for this work because i wasn't qualified like let us ill word you know like so many i wasn't qualified i didn't have the education i i didn't know how to work in this field so to speak mm. but um the lord really positioned me in places that at the time i didn't see as useful mm. but now looking back i can see wow i needed every single one of those experiences to do the work that I do now. Wow. That's fascinating. And then what was, what was it like? Like when did you, God open the door for you actually to get involved with anti-trafficking work? Yeah. So I was working at a mental health and substance abuse organization for adolescents for about seven years. And I got to sit under some of the top therapists, licensed clinical therapists, top psych child psychiatrists in the state. And um, I got to hash out and listen to them um, go through some of the most intense trauma cases. And then the Lord started to reignite this passion for the trafficking industry and, you know, wanting to kind of fight against it. And so I started kind of looking around, Lord, I know this is inside of me, but I don't know the next step. I don't know what to do. And I saw an ad 
for to become a sexual violence advocate. And I got trained up through an organization in New Jersey. And um, I worked with any time there was a, a sex abuse case in that county, I would be a first responder with the mm. forensics nurse examiner and the detective mm. to meet with the victim mm -hmm. and to go over and you know help them really be an advocate for them. And so that was kind of the first step. And then the Lord started to put it on my heart to come to Hawaii. Yeah. And because of my past uh, abuse that I had experienced here, um, I really had no desire to come back here. And so you grew up on a different island? I grew up here. I grew here. up on the okay. big, island, big yeah. island. And so I really didn't have a desire to come back, but the Lord kept talking to me about it. And I said, Lord, you know, I'll go wherever you want me to go. So if this is you, just start opening doors. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, he did. Awesome. So at the end of 2020, I shipped all of my stuff to Hawaii in faith. I had no idea why I was, because, you know, you would think, human trafficking, where are you going to Hawaii? Mm. Um, and so I shipped all of my stuff in faith and I sat on the couch and I cried and I said, Lord, wow. clearly I trust you because I shipped everything that I own, but you got to give me something. And that night I got a phone call from a friend and she says, I got to tell you about this organization. And it was an anti-sex trafficking organization. And I called them the next day and they said, well, we don't have any openings right now. We only have an opening in Hilo, Hawaii. And I said, I'm actually moving to Hilo, wow. so. No way. Yeah. So <laughs> that is nuts. That's yeah. an amazing story. Yeah. So. Wow. What have you learned ever since you moved to this island about, because you said, I have a heart for sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. Why would I go to Hawaii? What have you learned about that injustice and how it's manifesting on this island? Yeah. You know, my mind was blown. It was, it was blown when I learned about the statistics here mm. in this state. So prior to 2018, there was really no data on the topic at all. And there's no research done. So a lot of what you hear in our community is, oh, it doesn't happen here. Yeah. Um, you know, not it's not happening to our kids. It's someplace else. Mm. But Dr. Dominique Rosepowitz from Arizona State University, she came out with her sex trafficking intervention mm. research team, and they conducted really the first study that's ever wow. been done here. And they posted up a fake ad on Backpage.com offering the sale of an 11 year old girl. And the study was only done on Oahu and the Big Island. Mm. And the results were so staggering. She's come back every single year since to she's dedicated to giving us the, t the statistics that we need to prove that it's a problem here and that we need to be doing something about it. So um, they estimate that about one in 11 men are buyers of sex. This is what the study kind of alludes to of course the research is still very new and there's yeah. still a lot more that needs to be done but so far from what they found this is what they're seeing um the ad got 735 responses within the first 24 wow. hours wow. the reason why that number is so astronomical is because when they conducted this same study in phoenix arizona they only received 45 responses. Wow. So we're seeing that the demand for sex here is extremely high. And we know because sex trafficking works like a business, if the demand for a product is high, then the increase of that product, you know, the product has to increase. And so unfortunately, in this case, it's our most vulnerable, especially our, our teenagers, yeah. wow. kids and teenagers. Mm. So intense. Yeah. How would you define human trafficking? And what have you learned even uh, what the actual injustice is, what it's looked like, some of the cases you've worked with have, I know that maybe that definition has increased or changed, but how would you define that injustice? Yeah, so um, the, the federal definition for human trafficking is this very long-winded definition, but the one that I think is often overlooked is something called CSEC or Commercial Sexual Exploitation of Children. So if you're under the age of 18, you really, um, don't have to prove force, fraud, or coercion in the court of law. And so the the definition sort of changes when you're talking about uh, children under the age of 18. And what it is, is it's really any sexual activity um, in exchange for something of value. 
uh, or even the promise of something of value to either the child or another person or multiple people. And so this is one that we often overlook. And I think it's something that needs to be highlighted a little bit more because obviously those under 18 are really our most vulnerable in, nice. in population. Yeah. Yeah. Um, part. yeah. How do you find it and how maybe your definition is shifted mm. when you think about this injustice? Yeah. I mean, I think before, you know, before I really got into this work, I used to think of chains, handcuffs, um, oh, yeah. basements, dirty mattresses, creepy white vans being abducted, taken across borders into other countries. Um, I used to really think it was an overseas problem. And really trafficking has been confirmed in all 50 states. And um, America is really thought to be within the top three of the problem. Um, so when we're talking backyard, we're seeing that this is really not our, our paradigm of what trafficking mm -hmm. as in communities, what we've thought it looked like. We're kind of missing the mark. It's really only about seven to 10% of cases involve abduction. Yeah. And so if we're only viewing it through this certain lens of being held against your will, um, we're missing really the 90% of cases that is right under our noses. And um, one of my passions is to help raise awareness. Now, of course, trafficking looks different in every country, right? Yeah. It's going to look different everywhere that you go. Um, but one of you know, something that's burning on my heart is to really help raise awareness to equip our community members how to identify it, how to report it if you suspect it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm thinking of somebody that's 18, they're sitting in class and they're like, there's got to be so much more to life. I, I'm looking at these injustices, but I just have no idea how to get involved. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different ways, you know, there's, the first responders, there's the law enforcement, there's legislation. Uh, can you just walk us through, like if you were, I mean, you were <laughs> talking to a ton of young people that are passionate about this issue. What are the different avenues? Uh, well, first just lay out the different avenues of like how someone can get involved from like the most basic to you're giving your life to this, you know, just lay out maybe some of the different pathways they could take. Yeah, there's so many, so many different pathways because um, I really believe that to fight this issue where we have to take uh, a broader approach to what we think, you know, oftentimes we just think search and rescue, right? We're going to go in vigilante style, pull these kids out. But when we're understanding the dynamics of trafficking, and what it looks like, the reality is, is that oftentimes, you know, there's, there's so many psychological factors that come into play and the this rescue vigilante kind of thing that we often see in movies really is not feasible it, it's just not it's not a viable option um because oftentimes they're trauma bonded to their trafficker they you know it's someone that wow. they perceive to be their boyfriend a family member someone that they have a close relationship with you know over 80 percent of cases of traffickers they're it's someone that they know so um you know, when we look at it through that lens, it really shifts our approach to, you know, how do we get involved? What can I do? And so one, start a conversation. You know, I think there's so much stigma surrounding this mm. issue that um, we want to start tearing down the, the shame of talking about sex trafficking. You know, I'll, I talk about this issue and it sucks the air out of a room and people are just like, this is too, mm -hmm. too heavy. This is not party topic conversation. And I'm like, man, we have to, we have to start talking about the issue. Mm -hmm. Um, because if we don't, you know, if we just keep ignoring the elephant in the room, it's only going to get worse. So I would say that's the first easiest step is starting to have the conversation, starting to do the research on your own. Hey, what does it look like here? How can I get involved? Um, you can become a mentor. There's lots of different mentor programs in, in communities. Mm. Um, Ho'olanapua is one of them. They have a mentoring program locally here in Hawaii. But I mean, even in your own sphere. So if you're going to be trained to become a police officer, keeping this in mind in terms of training and 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 um, being aware of, um, you know, any type of illicit, illegal behavior that you might see and be the one, be the one who, who steps up to say something, um, I, I think is probably one of the, I think most, you know, 
tangible ways to be able to make that decision. It's really, it's really when it's in front of you, report it. Um, if you want to get into, you know, therapeutic services, right? You can become a counselor, a trauma counselor, and um, get trained up in trust-based relational intervention or trauma-informed care. Um, learning how to be specialized to work specifically with youth who have come from sexual trauma. You can become a foster parent. You know, the foster care system is riddled with kids who have experienced trafficking. Mm -hmm. So you can become a foster parent and um, help reduce this issue of unwanted kids, kids on the street. You know, um, there's so many, there's so many different ways that people can get involved, but that's just a few of them. Yeah. What are some maybe stories or things that you've seen where um, justice related work has really had an impact on people that have been affected by human trafficking? What, what is some of that, the fruit that you've seen? Um, so like meaning justice work like? Yeah, like any of these pathways that you're talking oh, yeah, about, yeah, like yeah. the fruit. Yeah, so um, we had, I had a, a woman, she shared her story about how it was, it was the relationship with the police officer who got her out of the life. And it was wow. this police officer who kept showing up, offering her meals, making sure she was okay, checking on her. And it was just the consistent care. It was just the consistent concern of one individual that shifted this so that when she was ready to get out of the life, um, he helped her make that transition and he still has relationship with her to this day. So, you know, I think we often overlook, we overlook the easy way to do it. And the most impactful way to do it is through relationship. Mm. You know, Harvard university came out with a study that showed that the, really the difference between a child becoming a success story, as opposed to another statistic is one caring adult. It's just one single person wow. who looks in on them, who checks in on them. Hey, how are you doing? Did you eat today? Hey, you know, do you have a place to sleep tonight? Mm. I mean, basic needs. This is what traffickers go after too, right? They look for basic needs. They look for holes in a kid's life. Mm. And so if we as a community gather together and we've got eyes and ears, teachers, law enforcement officers, yeah. counselors, whoever, grocery store workers, you know, yeah. I mean, anybody, it's like, if you have a relationship with any kid, any person in your life, be intentional about your relationship mm -hmm. with them and connecting with them. Yeah. So, you know, obviously in Yolene school, revival and reformation, we're trying to create some early pathways that young people can take and get involved here locally on the big Island, because it's such an issue. Um, but what, when you look at specifically what's happening here in Yolene school, what makes you excited? Like what, what, what is the potential of somebody deciding like, I'm passionate about this. I want to get training. I want to come, um, be a part of the revival and reformation school because I want to engage in this issue. What makes like, what potential do you see? What vision do you have in your heart for what could be built? Oh man. Um, you know, I, I don't think that it was by accident that the Lord, obviously that the Lord called me back here. And when I came back here and I first started this job, I just kept hearing in my spirit, you got to get to YWAM, you got to get to YWAM, you got to get to YWAM. Mm. And I had no idea why, right? I had no idea about Rev and Ref. I had no idea what was going on here, but I just felt such an urgency. Like I needed to connect with people here at the school. And when I did, I found Yulene and as I started to hear about this revival and reformation and I'm like, this is it, mm -hmm. this is it because I believe that this is the vision that the Lord's given me, um, you know, individually, but I think he's, he's calling people from the nations. He's calling people to get trained up in this. And I think what's, we're going to start to see happen is he's doing something here. You know, he's doing something here in terms of building, strategizing, putting people together. And I think as we were kind of talking about earlier today, it's a template for what he wants to do in the nations. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, right before I came here, I had a, a vision was one of the reasons why I decided to come. I had a vision of a, a tsunami that was coming to Hawaii to hit Hawaii. And 
all the, the Hawaiians were standing on the shore and they were waiting in anticipation for this wave to hit. And all the officials were like, you got to get off the beach. The tsunami's coming. And they said, we are not going anywhere. We've been waiting for wow. this wave. Holy and when cow. the wave came, <laughs> when the wave came, it hit and the Hawaiians jumped in and surfed the wave out to the end. And what I really felt like, mm. um, so then immediately, well, shortly after that, I want to say maybe within a few weeks or a few months, I'm getting ready, like really within a few days of me coming to Hawaii, Chuck Pierce released a word, his ministry released a word about a tsunami wave that was hitting, was going to hit Hawaii and it was going to have a ripple effect wow. to, out to the rest of the world, starting with the West Coast, wow. just in terms of revival. And um, since I've been here, um, I feel really strongly where he's giving strategies mm -hmm. and um, putting together structures and systems specifically in the area of justice, yeah. specifically in the area of reformation yes. that are going to be built here that are going to be multiplied yes. in the earth. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so excited. And then the beautiful thing about it is why? Why here? Because because there's a commitment here to glorify the name of Jesus. Yes. And so we have all these st structures and systems in the earth, but it's going to be Jesus whose name is glorified. It's going to be him who gets the glory, yeah. not any individual, right? And um, that is what I'm I'm starting to see here. And so I feel like if you mm. want to jump on the wave, you want to get Come in on, on what God's doing here, like, Yes. Jump in, jump in. Yes. That's so good. <laughs> so Yolene, good. I feel yes. like maybe you should, I don't know if it's too early to talk about it, but some of the, the practical things that the school is doing, yeah. maybe the, the prayer meeting or something, just yeah. to give people an idea of what is yes. beginning to happen and what's in your imagination. Yeah. yeah, I remember probably around the time that we met, we did a fast with our leadership team. We invited our whole school into it and really asking the Lord, how does this school, Revival and Reformation, how is it meant to impact the nations? Mm -hmm. And the scripture that the Holy Spirit started to really speak to us from was Matthew 25, where Jesus says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. Whatever you've done for the least of these, you've done unto me. It was at the end of our fast. And I remember sitting in the car and the Lord began to really breathe on that scripture. And I began to see these pictures in my mind of women that are caught in brothels, mm -hmm. victims of human trafficking, the poor in slum areas. And so... Um, children that have been affected by the orphan crisis around the world. So really expressions of the justice of God. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I'll say I was a bit hesitant because you see there's a natural justice bend in Gen Z. Like any yeah. social justice issue, they'll jump on that train. Mm -hmm. But then I think we have to really disciple that into a biblical worldview. Yeah. So in the beginning, I was, Lord, how do we actually get the language? And I felt like the Lord would send us people. And so you've been an incredible voice of hope. And uh, I would even say catalytic leader to help take that zeal, take that vision and really bring it to a biblical worldview. And so with Rev and Rev last year, we did these different project development tracks looking at poverty, human trafficking, the orphan crisis. And um, we sent them out on a one month outreach where they worked with people in the nations that are already doing a work that is bringing transformation to communities in the face of that specific injustice. And people that work with you, they are doing a, or started a business now where they want to employ women that come out of human trafficking. There were so many creative ideas mm. that we saw the Lord begin to speak by being with people and also by people that are burning for Jesus. Mm. And yeah. he, I found, is more committed to justice than we can ever be. Mm -hmm. wow. And yeah. so we listen to him. We spend time in a prayer room. We do this anti-trafficking sets every week and just pray and say, God, what are you saying? Because those things can feel like giants. But God is so committed to bringing his kingdom in the face of injustice. And so he's teaching us the simplicity of faith, hearing his voice, obeying. Mm. And he's been so faithful to bring people that we learn from and build with. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so by the end of the school, someone that does Rev and Ref, yeah. not only will they have that strong biblical foundation yes. that the school offers, but they'll have a vision of how to engage this issue and whether they're decide. I want to get involved here on the island right. or, you know, go join, you know, maybe it's a launch pad to join one of the other organizations or totally. one of the other pathways. Yes. Um, that that's the dream that we have to, mm -hmm. to launch people out. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, okay, Bethany, I just, I guess I want to give you like, is there anything else? You know, I, I just guarantee you there are people right now, their hearts are burning listening to this. Yes. Like, I know God has called me yes. to this. Like, what do you want to say to them? Yeah, you know, um, I, I feel like two things. First is, it's, and we talked about this today, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the honor of kings to seek it out. And I feel like there is a, a grace right now. There's there's something that has been opened an open door for people who are who are saying, "I'm gonna I'm gonna seek this out." Like you know, mm-hmm. uh, there's there's yes. solutions in heaven. There's yes. answers to injustices on the earth. And um, what what's coming to my mind is is Second Peter. But I feel like I I want to read it um, in the in the Passion Translation. And uh, he says, everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who called us by name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. As a result of this, he has given you magnificent promises and are, that are beyond all price so that through the power of these tremendous promises, we can experience partnership with the divine. And I, I, I feel like what used to be kind of a foreign concept, the Lord is making more sure, more aware of in the earth that he's wanting us he's he's longing for us to say he's like i've already given it to you i've already given you all the tools that you need everything that you that you need to do the work and it's through this relationship with me that you're going to get to partner with the divine you're going to get to partner with me in doing mighty exploits in the earth. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so excited to um, see a generation rise up and to answer that call and to say, yeah, here I, here I am, Lord, send me. Well, what do you, would you say you're believing God for? If you look at this issue, I know there's such a commitment in your heart to Mm -hmm. seeing a real change. What do you believe in God for? I mean, simply, it's really eradication of, of trafficking. I really, I really do believe in my heart that it is possible um, that when, when, I mean, any small group of people that are filled with the power of the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit, yes. when has he used any other method, right? Come like on. this is yeah. always the method that he's yes. used yes. Um, to bring change, yes. reformation, you know, I mean, the, the abolition of slavery, yes. right? I mean, it's just like, there's, it's it's something that is just part of his nature. It's his character. And we get to partner with that divine nature yes. in, in doing it in the earth. And I believe that it's possible. Yes. I believe that within one generation, like it's possible yes. to see the eradication of it, not just in Hawaii, but if as we multiply it and and we put it out into the earth that we can take this model and we can send it out to the earth that we can see it to the ends of the earth eradicate it yes so good so Gosh, good that's good and it's how i love what you said it's how god's worked william wilberforce saw the abolition of slave trade him and his friends yeah. just got together begin to pray never wavered on their conviction yeah and they had to fight yeah it wasn't easy people mm-hmm. People didn't quite agree for a long time and God used it. And I I think there's something that I love um, about your journey and what you carry is you really trust God. He's committed more than we could ever be. But then there's a deep conviction in your life out of the scriptures, out of the nature of God, that you're unwavering, that God, you know, God's dream that he wants to end it and you just partner with him. It's so incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You know, I think um, there's always been there will always be points crossroads in every believer's life where we have the option to opt out right yeah. like well, like there's a call there's a, a yes. thing that the lord is saying and you know you can go as far as you want to with it and with every every level there's an option just like i i say um 
you know, Ruth and, and Orpa, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, there's always, Orpa went back to her family. I don't think there was any sin in that. Yeah. I personally, I think, but yeah. there's something when, you, when God is burning something inside of you, it's like, okay, I, I could step out here. I've done a lot, you know, I've done a lot in my life. I've, I've, you know, started these programs and I've done this thing and, you know, help this, help these children here and all this stuff. And I think that's enough, but I wonder what would happen if there's a group of people, a generation that says, man, at every point, I'm going to yeah. continue to give yes. God my yes. I'm going to continue yeah. to wow. say yes, no matter the cost. Yes. And look, there are going to be things that you have to, that you have to give up or maybe sacrifice. Right. But mm. it is, it pales in comparison to the glory of knowing him, to the glory of, yes. of doing partnering with him and being in this divine relationship with him it just it pales in comparison and everything it's like paul says i count it as rubbish it's yes. garbage you know yes. everything that i've known in comparison for knowing him and so it's like we often talk about we want the glory we want the glory we want the glory but not a lot of people are willing to say yes at yeah. those high places and in those hard places and um i just would love to see a generation a whole generation of people yes. that just keep saying yes. And the glory of God that's going to be released upon the earth, I think is going to be unlike anything we've ever seen. Yes. yes. Amen. Yeah. And it looks like human trafficking ending. Yeah. That's the powerful thing. The glory yeah. of God. It looks like people being saved and injustices end and yeah. godly businesses. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just as you're talking like, wow, I pray a generation has a big enough vision. Mm -hmm. of Jesus, but also of his kingdom and what his glory looks like mm -hmm. as it goes into the nations. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I just, I want to invite everyone whose heart right now is burning. You have to come <laughs> to Kona and join the school <laughs> and join what Bethany's doing. Yes. Cause I, I, I you know, it's early beginnings. We don't yeah. know what it's going to look yes, like, sure. but there is a commitment. And, uh, I think a real, there's the leadership, there's the anointing, there's the vision, the burning hearts where we are going to see something yeah. that's where here locally, we're going to be like, yeah. oh my gosh, yes. testimony after testimony mm -hmm. of community getting, you know, transformed and God actually giving us something that we're going to yeah. say, okay, now let's go do it in the nations and sending out teams. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so if, <laughs> if you are listening to this yes. and your heart is burning, you have to come and join us and be part of that. And I think you should just pray for them. Yes. Uh, I, what you were saying about laying down your rights, I, we were all just listened to this message that Lauren gave, uh, in the seven seventies right. or mm -hmm. I don't know, it was a long time ago. Uh, and he was like the impact of your life, the measure of the impact of your life is directly related to how willing you are to lay down your rights. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he pointed to Jesus. He was yeah. ultimately, you, uh, you know, no one beats how much he laid down his rights and no one beats the impact that he made. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and so I, I think you need to pray for yes. them to have that courage to accept the cost, uh, and accept their calling and that uh, God would just speak and confirm just like he did with you that they are called to come and join you. Yeah. So father, right now, I just, um, I thank you for everyone whose heart is burning as they hear this message, that there's, um, a call to justice inside of them, that you're stirring something inside of them. And it may not be trafficking. It may be some other avenue of, um, the call, but Lord, I ask for a grace right now, a grace to be released upon them, um, that, that, a grace to say yes, but a grace to keep saying yes, Lord. A grace to keep saying yes. And Father, that you would call them into the, the deep places with you, that, that we would begin to see a generation of people that walk so closely with the Lord, like Moses, God, that, that they would see you face to face, that and they would say, God, we don't want to go anywhere unless you go with us. And it's not just for them, Lord, but it's for even generations after them that, that you are burning something inside of them. And why not you? Who knows? Who knows that you have not been called for such a time as this? Come on. And so, Lord, I pray that you would equip them, that you would train them up. 
and that you would set their face like flint, yes. that they would not be moved, that they would not be shaken, but that they would um, come with a fire blazing and that you would just continue to add, yeah. add oil to that fire, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. And I, I just want to break off um, self-doubt and discouragement off of anyone listening right now um, where you might be thinking like, you know, I just don't see how I can. I, I'm a high school dropout. I have no yeah. education. I have no degree. Um, it, it's the least of these. He, he can use the least of these. Come and on. there is no limit to what God can do with a person who is surrendered and yielded to him. And he uses the weak things, the foolish things of the earth to confound the wise. And I believe that that's what he is going to do in this hour, that he is going to storm the earth with people that it's not going to make any sense. It's just like the disciples, like, you know, who are these uneducated, untrained men? Yeah. But the difference yeah. was, is that they had been with Jesus. Yes. So Lord, I, I just release an anointing of endurance and anointing um, for the race, God, that not once they have your yes, Lord, that you would give them an anointing to see it through to completion in yeah. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. That was fire. It was so good. <laughs> All right. So if you want more information about the school, yes. go to ywmcona.org and yes. look for foundations for revival and reformation. And what's the Instagram? Uh, revival and reformation. Okay. And yes. you'll see you'll lean on there. Bethany, thank you so much. Yes. That was awesome. Thank you guys. It's and an honor being here. I have so much anticipation and excitement for what God's going to do. Yes. Thank you. Thank Amazing. You.